Hello, hello, grade 12. Welcome back to the channel. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at um your preparatory examination 2020. So uh, we'll be using this uh, to practice for our final exam, right? So as you can see here, the time is three hours and marks it's 150. So with this paper, I just want to share a strategy with you. Um, in terms of how you tackle our uh, physical science questions, right? So this is what I've developed to say, Guti, uh, if you are given three hours there, you don't want to start answering questions in a way that will demotivate you in some way. You want to gain momentum, right? And then as I always say that it is not compulsory that you answer the questions in, um, in a chronological order. That is to say in the way that they've placed them. So um, the the advice that I normally give my student is that the multiple choice questions should be the last questions that they answer. Because now you don't want to be wasting your time uh, trying to crack your head here, thinking of um, about five or six topics all at once. Because remember, with multiple choice, it's detailing all the uh, topics that will be inside the paper, right? So now it is better to just solve the questions inside the paper and then come back to solve uh, the multiple choice questions. So the way I do that is if I'm answering questions based on Newton's second law or Newton's law in general, then I will mark uh, the, the multiple choice questions that have to do with uh, the multiple choice, right? Now in that way, in that way, I can answer the multiple choice questions and then still on the same topic, I can then come and answer the uh, the multiple choice questions based on that topic, right? So to demonstrate that, let's say, for example, we are solving uh, here, we are solving question two, which we know question two is our, uh, is our Newton's second law, right? So we solve this and then we try to work out every, everything that is related to that. And then we come back here. Now we can see that 1.1 and 1.2, these are questions that are based on Newton's law, right? So which of Newton's law is associated with being a conservative force, right? Now, having answered the question there, I can now have an idea as to a, which question here or which a option can I choose from this one, right? So this kind of gives you uh, that momentum to answer questions and not to think a lot about these questions here, these multiple choice questions. Because trust me, a lot of you, you find yourself spending uh, spending about 20 to 30 minutes uh, trying to solve a uh, question one, right? And then question one is only about 20 marks. And now if you come to think about it, within that 20 marks, uh, within that 20 minutes meant to say, within that 20 minutes of striving to get that 20 marks, which uh, in most of the cases, uh, you might end up getting maybe five uh, multiple choice questions correct, which will give you 10 out of 20. Now, why not invest your time in something that you are guaranteed that you'll get marks on, right? So in that way, if I try to answer questions, I will start to answer my question from here. This is question 10. And then uh, we know optical phenomenon. Uh, we know that these ones are quite easier to answer. These ones, uh, even if you try to do self-study on these ones, they it's not a very hard topic to understand, right? Now you can start answering this and then you can see that this gives you a total of 14 marks. And then you can, you can rest assured that you are guaranteed all these marks because um, if you studied very well, then this is this should be an easy topic to answer. Then you can follow uh, by answering this question here, right? Then uh, the ones on generators and motors. Also, this one, we can all agree that it is pretty a, a simple question to answer because you only have a few uh, questions that are based on your notes. And then 
you will have that one question or two questions that is based on calculations, right? Which we know that uh, you'll have to apply those formulas for IRMS P average. Then yeah, it's quite easy to do those ones. Then from there, you can go and try to answer um, the Doppler effect, right? So looking at question six, we can agree that uh, after those two topics, the other easier question to answer is a Doppler effect. Now let's look at question eight. So remember, we've got 14 marks, um, 14 marks from question 10. And then here we have 13 marks, right? So now this, you can do it within the first uh, 60 minutes that you are given. Now, remember the mentality that you have, uh, that you must have, if you want to complete your question paper and then be able to accumulate a lot of marks, put it in your head that you will give yourself a challenge to say that in the first 60 minutes, I want to uh, I want to accumulate at least 50 marks from whatever questions that I will, uh, I will answer. I want to just accumulate 50 marks, right? Remember, you have three hours and then this is 150 marks. So that means each hour is divided to about 50 marks. So if you break down your three hours um, uh, by, by, by 150, so that's 150 divided by three, that means for each and every hour, you have to have accumulated 50 marks. Now you can do that by, let's say first hour, you, you strive to accumulate the 50 marks. Second hour, you strive to accumulate another 50 marks. You are now at 100. Now, in the last hour, you can focus on trying to get uh, the 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 other questions that you you, you might understand, or the, the ones whereby you will just have to write and substitute in the formula so that you get those one mark, two marks, right? So, so to supplement, remember, we are still speaking in terms of someone who wants to uh, at least achieve a level five, which is a, a, a good pass in physical sciences. Now, we know that the mark for that, you should just uh, strive to accumulate about 105 uh, marks in board papers, right? Now, we know that uh, generally, it depends on which paper is, more, is much simpler to you. Some say that uh, paper one is simple because they, they, they like to calculate rather than to have to study a lot of notes. And some who, who, who prefer reading uh, those bunch of notes uh, prefer um, paper two. So it's based on which uh, topic or which paper that you feel comfortable in. So in the paper that you feel comfortable in, you can even strive to get 130. Um, and then you can use the other paper to supplement the mark so that uh, after all, you get that average between the two papers of 105 to 110, 120. And then that's how you'd get your level five, level six, level seven, right? So now we have um, the 14 marks that we got from here, question 10. And then this one is 13 marks. So if we say 14 plus 13, that's 27, right? And then... After that, I said, go to Doppler effect, right? So with Doppler effect, uh, you are given 15 marks again. So we have plus 15 to that 27. We now have 42, right? Now from answering this, you can we can agree that um, another simple question to answer would be uh, your, your momentum, right? So momentum, we always have straightforward questions here. And then let's see, we have a total of, 13 marks here. So from that 42, if you add the 13 there, you have 55 marks, right? So um, those questions, let's, let, let's list those questions that you are going to answer in the first hour. So in the first hour, in the first 60 minutes, we'll just focus on answering these questions. Uh, we'll only... We'll only answer questions on... Doppler effect. So let me list them in the in the order. So we we will answer questions on photoelectric effect. So photoelectric effect, and then you'll have to go to a uh, electrodynamics. So that's your Gulf be your um DC AC mode. Electrodynamics. So number one, photoelectric effect. Number two, electrodynamics. And then number three, answer Doppler effect. Then number four, uh, try to answer momentum.
right? Momentum. So these are the four questions that you're going to be looking at in the first 60 minutes of your exam, right? Now, if you manage to accumulate the marks in this uh, part, then now you know that you can start uh, putting your attention in the other questions, right? So now with the first hour gone, with the first hour gone, and now you are in the second hour, you can try to answer question two. So in the second 60 minutes, now you want to focus on answering question two, right? Which is your uh, Newton second law. Now with Newton second law, maybe the ones that might be challenging are the ones whereby you have six marks, seven marks, but then you cannot just lose all that seven marks. You can always do something because we know that with this topic, um, it's just a matter of having to know how to draw your free body diagram and then simply uh, forming equations out of your free body diagram. Then you can substitute whatever that you are given there. So you can, at least from the seven marks, if you do not get all the seven marks, strive at least to get the three or four marks from this. So now um, with that, you can then have something like 17, let's say minus four, right? So let's say from this one, we managed to get 13 marks, right? So we managed to get about 13 marks. Now, um, still in the second hour, you want to answer this question three, right? So in the second hour, you want to answer questions on um, your VPM, vertical projectile motion. Now, vertical projectile motion can also be an easier topic to understand, right? So um, I can bet that you can get uh, all the marks there. Or maybe let's say, um, let's say maybe you managed to get 14. So you have the, the 13 that you got here and then uh, the, the 16. Or the, and then from here you get 14, right? So that's 27. So that's 14 and then the 13 that you got there. So that's about 27. You've already answered this, right? Now you can try to go and answer a work energy and power, right? So work energy and power can be confident that you will get all the marks in here. So you can say plus a, the 13 marks there, right? Then that's 40, right? Now you've already answered this one here. Now you can go and try to answer the questions on electrostatics. Try to answer electrostatic. Um, let's say here out of this 14, you just managed to get 10. Now you are already at 50. You are already at 50. So that's in the second hour. That's in the first uh, that's in the second 60 minutes of your exam. So in the second 60 minutes of your exam, you have answered what? You have answered a uh, Newton. Newton's second law. And then number two, you will answer VPM, vertical projectile motion. Then three, work energy and power. And then four, try to answer a Coulomb's law or electrostatics. Now, um, electricity is not is not everyone's favorite topic, so this one could be the one that you write at the end of your paper, right? So you have you are left with this question eight here, so you'll be left with this question eight here, which is your um electricity. Then you can try to answer this in the last hour, and then remember to go to multiple choice questions. Now with this strategy, you must not forget that you haven't answered your multiple choice question. 
now you have the 20 marks here but then now the this one will be easier to answer why because you've already went through the topics right and then answering the topics inside or inside the paper will kind of give you an idea as to how to answer the questions in here right because you have used some of the concept while answering uh, the questions. Now it becomes easier for you to answer multiple choice questions when you have went through the whole paper, right? So now you can try to strive um, from that 20 marks. Let's say maybe you managed to get seven of this correct. So that's about 14 marks. This marks will add on to the 100 that you've already got in the uh, first two hours. Right. So now, whatever mark that you got, as long as you secure that in the first and the second hour, you accumulate as much marks as possible. Right. So that's how you go about uh, answering your question paper strategically. So, right. So um, I hope that you use this strategy and try to go through your papers like that. And then it will it will save you a lot of energy it will save you a lot of time and then you will have that that, that free time to also go through your questions recheck your question if you didn't do any mistakes because one thing um that might say that might really cost you is that maybe you were answering this the other questions but then you made a mistake and still you did not have time to go and check the questions that you've already answered things like uh, you must check if you have um, placed your SI units. We know that in physical science, if you do not include your SI unit, we omit marks. So you go and check um, if you if you have placed all your SI unit and also the correct SI unit. If you have used the correct formulas, if you have converted where you need to convert. So those are the things that you check in the last hour right so trying to supplement remember in the last hour you are just out there trying to get the marks that will supplement right uh your you uh, the the marks that you've already aimed for in the in the first two hours right and also trying to get your multiple choice questions so that's how you go about it remember guys it's all about saving time it's all about approaching your exam strategically so that you don't find yourself having to not a uh, complete your exam right so with all that being said guys um all the best all the best in writing your exam practice and practice so if you if you want this paper um i will drop the link below then you can download this paper question uh, 2020 then it's a very good paper it's a very good paper it's a nice one especially when it comes to work energy and power they have a very nice question here i'm so tempted to do it right now but then um that's not the purpose of the video so yeah all the best nice one